There's a treasured property across from White Point Gardens dating back to the 1800s. In this creepy Carolina, Cheriston Clark takes us to 20 South Battery, a restored and preserved piece of Charleston history with claims of two friendly ghosts. 20 South Battery's main home was built in 1843. Oh. 175 years later, Dr. Jack Schaefer became the newest owner of this historic property. When I bought the property, um, it took three and a half years to have it redone. And um, I decided that I wanted people to experience what it's like to walk in a house like this. So we just called the whole property 20 South Battery. It may be home for Dr. Schaefer, but he shares it with two friendly ghosts. Let's rewind some. White Point Garden across the street was used as fortification during the Civil War. 20 South Battery's carriage house may have been a makeshift hospital for wounded soldiers. Room 8's ghost is believed to be a Confederate soldier. He was probably a wounded soldier because people had seen his gray, felt his gray jacket. He is a torso, there's no head, no, no, no arms, but um, they felt this gray People have described this great coarse jacket. Have you seen all the pictures of Confederates? So they all, you know, had these great coarse jackets. Dr. Schaefer recalls his own experience. While the property was being restored, it was 6.30 in the evening and he was alone. And I hear, boom, and boom, two booms. And it was like a crack, like something fell out of the ceiling and hit the floor hard. I say, oh my gosh, what fell? I thought maybe the feeling, ceiling fell in because I thought each floor was gutted out. I walk upstairs and on that floor there's nothing. There's nothing on the floor, you know, the, the, the rafters and the floor and that's it. He went to a woman who used to work there and told her about the strange sound. And she said that sound like boom, boom. I said, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I said, oh, that's the ghost tonight. That's what he does. Then there's the ghost in room 10 who was described as a child. And he came home and he disappeared for a week and then, quote unquote, fell off the th out of the third floor window. Some think it's not a child, but rather Richard Lathers, who purchased the property back in 1870. He only really comes out mainly for women. He likes to lay in bed with you, he likes to touch your hair. Many people at, at, at order an extra glass of wine or put flowers out for him. Um, he really shows up a lot, but mainly, uh, like I said, for women, he's very gentle, and if you, if you feel scared, he'll run. And he, he's truly outlined a man in a tuxedo or a nice suit, uh, and, and you know, he's called the Gentleman Ghost. With 180 years of history, it's a stay that will leave you educated with haunting information. Thank you for joining us. Local organ donation group We Share Hope South Carolina held a roundtable with candidates for the District 42 State Senate seat. They're focusing on overcoming hurdles surrounding organ, eye, and tissue donations here in the state. News 4's Webb Wright was there and joins us now with what they said. Webb? Well, State House Reps J.A. Moore and Dion Tedder, both candidates for the state Senate seat in District 42, attended the event. According to We Share Hope South Carolina, more than 1,600 South Carolinians are on the national transplant waiting list. More than 67% of those patients are from multicultural communities. Both candidates believe there are significant financial hurdles in these communities for those needing a transplant. They say those could be addressed legislatively. But the bigger battle includes fighting long-standing misconceptions regarding organ donation in these same communities. When I was younger, uh, there was a perception that if you are an organ donor uh, and you're in a bad accident, that you may not be revived because you are an organ donor. That's false, but it takes education and conversation around that uh, to get that to the communities, uh, particularly that don't have a lot of trust in our healthcare professionals. There's a definite trust gap when it comes to uh, uh, the medical community, the African American community, and government. So I think that one of the main things that I will continue to do is to go where people are. Uh, because in order for us to uh, get rid of some of these communication trust gaps, you have to go to people. You have to connect directly to people. 
We reached out to the third Democratic candidate in the District 42 race to get their take. State Rep Wendell Gilliard sent us a statement in writing in part saying, quote, I am a proud co-sponsor of House 3255, which passed the South Carolina House and prohibits insurers from discriminating against living donors when issuing policies. The courage, grace, and loving humanity of those donors cannot be underestimated and should not be impeded. We did not hear back from Republican candidate Rosa Key. We Share Hope says there are over 100,000 people nationally on the transplant waiting list. It's no secret schools and students need mental health resources now more than ever. And with schools starting back up again, we wanted to see what help is available. Our Floriana Boardman joins us now. And Floriana, it's not just counselors that are important, it's education as well. That's right, Tessa, and a new resource is being used in Dorchester, Berkeley, and Charleston County schools. It's called EverFi, and it's teaching students about mental health and wellness. 17 schools in the Lowcountry aren't just teaching physical health, but mental health as well. The idea is to build a comprehensive understanding of what mental wellness is and how to maintain or achieve it. The Understanding Mental Wellness course is two hours with six lessons. It provides mental health education at no cost to schools. There are interactive scenarios and it's a digital stories that allow the students to face these stressful situations in a fail safe environment and they can manage their mental health effectively while learning to identify warning signs and how to get help for themselves or for others. This way, before something happens, students know what to do. Teaching them the importance of paying attention to their mental health. Um, it also provides strategies for our students to cope during stressful or um, stressful challenges. It's an additional resource to the mental health counselors already offered at the majority of low country schools providing psychiatric services. Currently, uh, we serve a lot of children who are experiencing increased anxiety, uh, attention deficit issues. Um, we, we treat a lot of depression and trauma as well. The hope is that one day, every Lowcountry student will have access to these potentially life-saving resources. And according to BCSD, this year they have 22 mental health counselors with a ratio of one counselor to every 841 students. According to the Department of Mental Health, as of last year, there was a mental health counselor in every DD2 school. In CCSD, they had a mental health counselor in 70 of the 88 schools.